Hi everybody. Uh, strips are a primary geometric element of any fusion model and uh, the options for editing those strips vary with the complexity of your model and its seam network. So we'll look at all of that here but let's start with a uh, simple mesh fusion item. This model has a simple seam network with no intersecting seams. Because of that, strip editing is also simple and direct. Clicking on a strip item brings up the channel hauler with width and profile settings along with two smoothing sliders. The smoothing sliders control the boundary smoothing on either side of the strip. Boundary smoothing along with strip width are two essential factors uh, for creating nice fusion models and airtight meshes. Even with a very simple network, strips can contain more than one element, as we see here. Strips are defined by all of the intersections of any two specific meshes. Since the box and the disc intersect in two places, we get two separate strip segments. In this case, they share properties and are edited together. However, independent control of these substrips, as we call them, becomes important when dealing with more complex networks. Here we see a more typical network with intersecting seams. If we go to the Fusion Items Strips Group Locator and select the strip items, you'll notice that each strip item consists of several disconnected strip segments in the Fusion model. Mesh Fusion has tools that help us both control and manage all of those substrips. But before we can do that, we need to create items for those substrips. The Add All Substrips button in the Strip Options pop-up does the job. You can see that each original strip item now has children. Those are our substrip items. Selecting all of the substrip children of a strip item gives us the same set of substrips or strip segments as the parent strip item originally represented. Note that the parent is now simply a group locator. It's not an editable strip item. With substrips in place, we now get a pop-up with some options when clicking on a strip in the 3D viewport. With a simple non-intersecting strip, the only interesting option is this Select Strip Group option. It gives you all of the siblings of the parent strip item, the same segments you would have gotten if substrips were not present. With substrips available, you have the option of editing the clicked segment independently. And you do that by just going straight to channel hauling. There you have the width, profile, and two-sided smoothing controls that we saw on the simple model at the start of this video. Things uh, get more interesting when you click on a strip that intersects with other strips in the model. For the purposes of smoothing, we are interested in closed loops consisting of several substrips. Any one strip is a part of two such loops. After selecting a strip, we can choose either of those two loops with the buttons in the pop-up form. After selecting a loop, you can edit the properties of all of its subloops, including smoothing, with channel hauling. Smoothing can only be applied to complete loops. If you edit any selection of substrips that include incomplete loops, you will not see the smoothing sliders in the channel hall form. With many mesh arrangements, there are selections of substrips and loops that logically go together and that you might want to edit together. That's where this include related loop checkbox comes into play. If it's ticked, your subsequent loop selections will include all such related loops. Note that this is not based on the symmetry of the meshes in the model. Rather, it's based on matching sets of meshes that form loops. It naturally works with many symmetric models, but it is also useful with many non-symmetric arrangements. So, you can see that in action here. Um, I select a strip, 
Then, uh, with the Include Related Loops box ticked, I select the loop. All loops whose boundaries are formed by the intersection of the same set of meshes are now included. And I can edit all of their settings at once, including smoothing, because all of the selected substrips are part of complete loops. Another selection option is the strip group. As mentioned before, it selects all the siblings of the parent strip item. These are all of the strip segments created by the intersection of two particular meshes. Again, this is a set of strips that often makes sense to edit together. Note, however, that it often does not consist of complete loops and therefore will not offer the smoothing sliders. Nonetheless, uh, with such a selection, you'll still be able to edit uh, width and profile uh, together, which again is often a logical thing to do with uh, any number of models. As the text update notes mentioned, there is a change and some additional options with strip channel hauling. The change is that the default width and profile sliders are now proportional. They scale the properties of the selected substrips. This is important because different substrips may have different width and profile settings, unlike smoothing, which is always shared by all substrips in a given loop. Proportional scaling preserves the relative widths and profiles of the selected strips. On the other hand, there are times when you do want to unify the properties of several strips. In that case, after selecting your strips, press the Alt key to get the Uniform Hall option. Since this will immediately change the settings of all selected strips, you will likely want to filter which properties will be affected. This second pop-up lets you do that. Here I'm only editing width. The width setting of all selected strips is now the same. Note, however, that strip width is also affected by local quad sizes so the actual widths of individual strips may vary. And there is a third option for strip properties editing, the stepper controls, accessed by pressing the shift key when hitting the channel hall button. Uh, one little inconvenience here is that the pop-ups are not movable once the stepper is activated. So you'll want to move the controls out of the way before initiating stepping. Steppers are a good option with very complex models where the interactive sliders are not very responsive. Like the default controls, the stepper uses proportional scaling for width and profile. There are also sliders, but the incremental steppers are the real purpose of these controls. 5 and 10% step buttons are available, along with the equal button, which returns the property to the value it had on entering this controller. There are also the Reset to Global Value buttons that set the properties to the global value specified in your Fusion Items Properties panel. Smoothing is typically a small integer value, so the controls are also simple. You can increase or decrease by 1 or 10, or use the 0 button to set smoothing to uh, 0, and it's usually only a few clicks to get from 0 to your desired smoothing level. Together, these tools provide uh, full control of your strips, uh, helping you get the most out of your fusion models. All right, everybody. Thanks.